Hello and welcome to today's presentation entitled STEM OPT Eligibility and How to Apply. Today's presentation will follow this basic agenda. First, what is STEM OPT extension and eligibility, types of employment, the application process, required documents, mandatory reporting requirements, and finally application timeline. Before we get into the details in the heart of the presentation, a bit of a disclaimer on behalf of ISS. Please note that all of the content within this presentation and guidance from the ISS office, including but not limited to handouts, website content, emails, and verbal instructions do not constitute legal advice, and we cannot guarantee approval of OPT, STEM OPT, or other USCIS adjudicated benefits. The STEM OPT extension is an extension of post-completion OPT. It is a 24 month work permit that allows for work related to your field of study. The maximum length is 24 months. In exchange for your application, which you submit to USCIS, you will receive a work permit in the form of an employment authorization document or EAD for short. The STEM OPT extension is only allowed for students with a STEM designated degree. This illustration here shows the life cycle of an F1 student using OPT and STEM OPT employment benefits. On the very left hand side, you'll see that there's a line that designates the completed degree, then the period of post completion OPT, and you'll note that the 24 month STEM extension starts immediately after the end of the post completion OPT period and lasts for a 24 month period. From the STEM OPT end date, or the end date of the STEM OPT EAD, you will have a 60 day grace period wherein you can remain in the US, pursue transfer and gain admission to another CVS approved school and transfer, or depart the US. In order to be eligible for the STEM OPT benefit, you must hold a degree in a STEM designated field. For a complete list of the STEM designated majors, you can visit the following link on the ICE or Immigration and Customs Enforcement website. In addition to the above, you must also be currently on approved post-completion OPT. You must also not have exceeded 90 or more days of unemployment on your current approved post-completion OPT. Lastly, you must be employed in a paid position or have the job offer for work related to your field of study from an employer registered in the USCIS E-Verify program. To find out more on E-Verify and related information, please visit the following USCIS website. If you have a filed and or pending H-1B petition with USCIS, you can still apply for the STEM OPT benefit as a backup plan. Please note that the application for STEM OPT is the same regardless of your H-1B considerations. In other words, whether or not you have a filed or pending H-1B petition will not change the application that you will first submit to ISS and then mail to USCIS. If you have an approved H-1B, it will not be valid until October 1 of this year. You should refer to our webpage on the H-1B cap gap extension. You may qualify for the cap gap extension, which will provide work authorization that fills the gap between your OPT end date and the start of your H-1B status. In order to be considered valid for STEM OPT, the employer must be actively enrolled in E-Verify and have an IRS employer identification number or EIN for short. There is some confusion amongst students, but these are different and unique IDs. So the employer must possess both in order for you to be able to work with them for the STEM OPT period. The employment or internship must be paid. It must also be a minimum of 20 hours per week. Lastly, the employer must agree to comply with all the conditions and reporting requirements of the STEM OPT program. The employer complies by completing and signing the form I-983 training plan. If your current or prospective employer wants to understand their obligations for a STEM OPT student such as yourself, please refer them to the I-983 form itself on page two. You can also refer them to the USCIS website for the I-983 form itself, wherein employer obligations are listed. Lastly, they can be referred to the Study in the States Employer Hub for the I-983 and also for the STEM OPT program to learn more details about what is required of them as an employer. The current USCIS processing times for the STEM OPT are in constant motion and constant flux. For the current processing time, please refer to the following website. The earliest day USCIS can receive an application for the STEM OPT benefit is 90 days before your current post-completion OPT expires. The latest day USCIS can receive an application for the STEM OPT benefit is your OPT or EAD expiration date. 
you should submit your request to ISS for the STEM OPT I-20 as early as four months before your OPT slash EAD expires. This will allow ISS ample time to process, review, and provide you with any corrections if needed. To illustrate a little bit better about what those timelines look like, we have this visual here, which has the bookends of the OPT start and end date. We then have the red line, which designates the earliest you should submit a request to ISS for your STEM OPT I-20. And then the orange line up until the OPT end date signifies the three month window that USCIS can receive your application for the benefit. Please note the line ends at the OPT end date and simply put USCIS cannot receive an application for your STEM OPT benefit even one day after your OPT EAD expires. To better understand how these dates figure in, we've put some sample dates. You'll see here that the start of this student's OPT period is July 15, 2021 and the end date is July 14, 2022. Using that end date as a guide, we count backwards to receive the three-month window where USCIS can receive the application, which starts April 14, 2022 and ends July 14, 2022. And then the red line signifies the earliest that you can submit an application to ISS, which would be March 14, 2022. The first step is for you to submit the ISS 24-month STEM OPT extension request form, and that will require that you upload the form I-983. Then, an ISIS advisor will review your submissions, and if any corrections are needed, they will email you with a detailed list. Please note that the email will come from Formstack, and Formstack will be the sender. However, within the contents and body of that email will be notes entered by an advisor. So those notes will include any corrections that are needed on your end in order for you to proceed with the STEM OPT application. Next, an ISIS advisor will recommend the STEM OPT extension and issue a new I-20 with the STEM OPT recommendation. This step typically takes 14 calendar days. However, it may take longer depending on the number of total submissions we have received. If you submit the application to ISS more than four months before your OPT expiration date, an advisor will not process it until it reaches the four month threshold. After the new I-20 has been generated, an ISS advisor will email this digitally signed I-20 to your CSUF email account or the email account associated with your CVIS portal. You'll then be prompted to print out and sign your new I-20 and assemble the STEM OPT application for mailing to USCIS. Once you've completed this application, you'll then mail it to USCIS. Finally, USCIS will review your application and make a decision. To put it into a bit of a visual, we have the following graphic. Again, step one is to submit the request to ISS and that must include the I-983 as an upload you will receive the STEM OPT I-20 from ISS. Then you'll need to assemble the packet, mail the packet to USCIS, and finally wait for a USCIS adjudication slash decision. After receiving the STEM OPT I-20 from ISS, you should then assemble the STEM OPT packet and mail it to USCIS according to the STEM OPT extension application checklist. On our website, we have a PDF available for download, which includes this checklist and also instructions on how to prepare your filing fee and your photos. We provided a screenshot below of what that PDF looks like. In addition to the PDF we have available for download, we'll also review the items required for the STEM OPT application to USCIS. Firstly, you must include a completed and signed form I-765. Please note that you should be downloading the form directly from the USCIS website to ensure that you're using the most current version. Then you'll need to include a copy of the I-20 with the STEM OPT recommendation, which will be emailed to you by an ISIS advisor. On that I-20, there's a few things that you should ensure before proceeding with filing with USCIS for this application. Please ensure that the advisor signs on pages one and two of this I-20 also verify that the program information on page one is complete and accurate, and that includes the program level, so level of education, and then also the major. Finally, please review the employer information sections on pages two for both the OPT and STEM OPT period to ensure that the most accurate and complete information is provided in your application. Next, you must include a copy of your current post-completion OPT EAD card, both front and back. Then, you must also include copies of your post-completion OPT I-20 or I-20s. So you'll need to include all of the I-20s you have obtained during your post-OPT period, starting with the I-20 that was issued to you after you first reported your OPT employer. If you have had just one employer for the duration of your OPT period, then you will have just one OPT I-20 to include in your USCIS packet. 
If you have had multiple employer changes or multiple simultaneous employers during the course of your OPT period, then you have multiple I-20s to include in your application to USCIS. Next, you must include a copy of the passport pages of your passport, which include the biographical and photo pages. Then, you must also include a copy of your I-94, whether it's the electronic version or the physical card, in which case you must include the front and back. You should have just one version of this form, so please note that it is either or. You must also include a copy of your STEM degree diploma or a copy of the transcript showing the conferred STEM degree. Again, this is either or, so you do not need to include both. Next, you must include, or it is recommended that you include, a government form called the G1145, which adds tracking to your application with USCIS. So this is an optional form, but it is highly recommended that you include this. Another requirement is the filing fee. You must include the current filing fee for this application with USCIS. And just like with government forms, we recommend you go directly to the USCIS website to ensure that you are endorsing your check or money order for the correct amount. Finally, your application to USCIS must include two U.S. passport style photos. And please note that these should be recently taken and they should not be the same photos that were used on previous EADs, previous visas, or previous passports. Now we'll take a look at the I-765 in a little bit more detail. The I-765 is a required form to request your STEM OPT EAD. ISS does not review your I-765 prior to you submitting it to USCIS. As a second reminder, always download the I-765 directly from the USCIS website to ensure that you're using the most current and latest version. In addition to the download, you can also verify the addition date by expanding the accordion on the USCIS website under the addition date section. As of today's recording, the most current edition is August 25th, 2020. If you open the PDF for the I-765, it should have that same date on the bottom left-hand corner. For assistance in completing the I-765, please refer to the ISS guide, which we have created and then made available on our website as a download. Please also note that there are two versions of the I-765 guide, one for the post-completion OPT applicants and the other for the STEM OPT applicants. Please refer to the STEM OPT applicant I-765 guide as it has unique sections that do not fall under the OPT application. Finally, we've provided a direct link to the I-765 form section of the USCIS website. That is the site that you should visit to download the form directly and also learn more about the addition date. Do note that this is a static link, so it should not change in the future, even if the form is updated or the contents of the form change in any manner. There are two important dates to consider when applying for your STEM OPT. Firstly, USCIS must receive your complete OPT STEM application before the expiration date of your current post-completion OPT, as noted on your EAD. You'll see that on this example of an EAD, we have highlighted the expiration date with a red circle. This deadline is strictly enforced by USCIS, and even if your completed application arrives one day after your OPT EAD expires, it will be denied. Please plan on having your packets arrive at USCIS at least one week before your OPT expiration date. Now let's consider the other important mailing deadline. Each applicant has their specific mail deadline depending on when the STEM OPT I-20 is generated. On your STEM I-20, you will see a date issued, which we have circled in the example. That date determines your secondary mailing deadline. In addition to the EAD expiration date, you must also submit and they must receive your complete OPT STEM application no later than 60 days after the STEM I-20 issue date. You must submit a complete packet by the aforementioned deadlines. If returned to you, you are still subject to the same application window and application deadlines. USCIS might return your packet after your application window, which means that you have missed the deadline to submit your STEM application. Please remember to factor in a few extra days for mailing. Our recommendation is that you ensure that your application to USCIS is received no later than one week before your OPT EAD expires. While your STEM OPT packet is pending with USCIS, you can remain in the US and continue working for up to 180 days while the STEM OPT is in the pending phase, even if your post-completion OPT EAD has expired. To continue to work with your employer past the expiration date of your OPT EAD, please provide your employer the I-20 with STEM OPT recommendation with the endorsement of a CSUF advisor. This I-20 is listed on the employer's USCIS form I-9 as an acceptable document to allow you to work without the STEM OPT EAD approval.
If your application for STEM OPT is denied by USCIS for any reason, you must stop work immediately. Visit our advising page to make an appointment with an advisor immediately if this happens. ISIS advises students not to travel internationally until the STEM extension application is approved and you have received a new EAD card. For more information, please visit our travel and visa webpage, which we've circled below. There are too many hypothetical scenarios to cover in today's presentation, but we ask that you start by reviewing the travel and visa webpage as we have listed the most common scenarios and situations for international travel. If, however, the travel and visa webpage does not cover your particular circumstances, and situations, please make an advising appointment for further assistance. Employment changes while your STEM OPT packet is being processed with USCIS are not recommended. The STEM packet that you submitted to USCIS is for a specific employer. The STEM I-20 shows that employer, and in addition to that, the Form I-765, which you have filled out, has both the e-verify number and e-verify name for a specific employer. If, however, an employment change is necessary, please make an immediate appointment with an ISS advisor to discuss the steps to update USCIS and your pending application. To further elaborate, if your STEM OPT employment ends or will end while your STEM OPT application is pending with USCIS, you need to provide documents to ISS within 10 calendar days. Please also ensure that if you have secured new STEM employment, that it meets all the conditions and requirements for STEM OPT employment. Changes to your mailing address specifically the address you've reported on the I-765 under your U.S. mailing address, which is designated by Part 25A, are not recommended while your STEM OPT is under review with USCIS. If the change in address is unavoidable and you can simply no longer receive any type of mail at that address, you can submit an AR-11 change of address form on the USCIS website. Please note that even if you successfully submit an AR-11, USCIS may still mail documents such as the receipt notice and eventual STEM OPT EAD to the original address on the I-765 and disregard your AR-11 submission. This makes it all the more important that you put a reliable and secure mailing address for your application with USCIS. If you do not have a personal mailing address for your I-765, please refer to our guide on the I-765 for tips on designating another person's address so they can receive your documents on your behalf. So you now understand the steps to submit a STEM OPT application with ISS and USCIS, but there's plenty more to learn about all the reporting requirements after your STEM OPT is approved. For that, see our Maintaining Status STEM OPT Extension webpage for those answers and more and we've provided a screenshot below of what that page looks like. Have questions about your STEM OPT eligibility that were not answered? Then please consider booking an appointment using our ISS advising page, located at the following link. Otherwise, that concludes today's presentation. We thank you so much for your participation, and we look forward to reviewing your application. Have a wonderful day.